Hi folks, you want to see something wild? I don't know, many of you who are kind of newer to my channel, it's kind of the back of my house, um, and I'm showing you this stuff, but I'm not showing you where the cameras are. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, those of you who decide, oh, I know where he lives and I'm going to come take something, good luck. The cameras are out. Um, anyway, check it out. Got quite the uh, horde of all-terrain vehicles here. That one has no motor on it. It's probably a 200S or a 185S. Um, right, it's got front suspension. This one... Probably an ATC 200 or 185 or ATC 185. Not bad looking. 200S. Another 200S. Not bad looking. I'm thinking another 200S. It's got nice tires on it. Somebody changed the gas tank somewhere along the line here. What is this? Uh, no front suspension, probably an ATC 200 or 185. That's an older one. When they were big like that, they were older. And another 200S. And last but not least, a 90. This was one of those balloon tire 90s that somebody um, altered. You can tell by the green color that it was back back then got this one up in the Poconos um, a guy who puts together diesel trucks and races them um, owned it um, this one it was actually cool I went to his shop and got to see the stuff he worked on he was the kind of guy who could um, like cut this fender and put it on a completely different vehicle and make the lines match up. He he had that um, that ability to see in three dimensions like that. I mean, really cool. Um, yeah, he did some amazing stuff. He used to work on a lot of the stuff from the late 40s, early 50s, you know, because everything back then was all rounded and all. He, he was able to cut up, you know, trucks and um, cars and, and once again get the panels to all match. He was working on this one truck. He was big on the Cummings diesel and he liked the old Cummings diesels, the mechanical linkage um, kind before the electronics. And um, he was working on, on this one van and he had taken the the front fenders off a of 1950s something and kind of cut them and was fitting them over he put dualies in the back of this older truck and he was kind of fitting the fenders over them so it flared out over the dualies to be able to um to picture that in your mind and cut in such a way that when you put it on it's not like you know gaps this big and then you know oh i gotta cut this off and then back to gaps and all Seems that I also have a horde of tires up here. And, you know, when you look for your four foot level and your um, <laughs> saws and small vacuum cleaners and hangers and all, that's where they are. By the way, this shed, I'm gonna, it's kind of a, um, I'm gonna call it kind of an equipment shed. It's pretty long over 20 feet I think it's 25 feet 20 I don't know because from there to there is more than 10 call it 20 feet I guess 25 whatever um, this w actually worked well the way I put it together was I built that wall and this wall and this wall kind of propped up against here right to get it level and all that and this is a duplicate of the far one obviously then I built the center and I kind of used the standard dimension for the back beam 
center beam, this beam, obviously I used hangers. And once I hooked it to the top, then I just worked on the bottom till it was level. Once again, it's not, you know, it's not like on a foundation or anything. So we had that wall and this wall, got it level and um, these are keyed. This piece of wood goes beyond and out here. And then this one here obviously goes beyond and out here. So these are keyed together, right? And screwed into the wall. So now this really can't fall over, right? Because it's locked together. And then that's locked together. And I even put, you, you can't see it, but um, along the bottom center, there's also um, a beam un under the dirt. And the reason why you want to do that is because you don't, you don't want this to kick out, right? Um, though with it keyed there and keyed there, it's hard to have it kick out, but on the front here, it's not keyed. So once again, I figured, uh, you know, there might even be one in the front, to be honest with you. No. I don't see it. Well, actually, it's lifted there, so. And once again, hooked it all up there. So this shed has been good. This has been uh, very helpful. Um, obviously, I only wanted it one deep. Why didn't I build it deeper? Because now you're beginning to really affect the view. Every once in a while, I'll be watching TV in there. Some animal will hop up on this like a raccoon and you can hear it kind of walking about. That's when you, uh, that's when you uh, run to make sure you have some of your civil defenses ready to go. There's this sawdust here. And quite honestly, I'm not, not sure what it's from. Could be that one of these guys was rubbing against something. I don't know. It is kind of strange. Anyway, folks. Let me, let, let me know what you guys think of my hoard. Sometimes I go through and um, obviously I'm trying to clean up, right? I'm, I got to get ready for winter, so I got to, you know, maximize my space and, and so forth. Like I'm noticing that I probably, you know, if I got the tires off of this one, I could probably crowd it over a little bit more, crowd that one over a little more, and maybe get one more in here. And you might say, well, that's just one. Who cares? Well, if you get one out of the garage, now instead of having it in storage, you have one more space to work in. Um, this, this maximizes space quite a bit. By the way, about space when it comes to storing these three-wheelers, if they're not shaft drive, um, you could actually uh, stand them up on the uh, back tires and um, and uh, back bar. I have to be careful what kind of kind of words I use. So I, I, you know, the only thing I'm going to call it is the the back bar um, or the luggage rack. Um, so it, you can you can stand them up on that. I've had some success with that. Uh, the good things about that is it takes the tires, the weight off the front tire, and believe it or not, it actually takes quite a bit of weight off the back tire. So the back tires don't have a tendency to to flatten as as much. So um, those are the good things. Um, they when you do settle them back down, you gotta make sure you know before you start them. You don't want to start them instantly. You want the oil to be. Uh, to be where it could be lubricate the inside of the engine. Um, if your shifter seal is a little bit weak, um, you might leak a little bit out of there. I mean, it won't pour out, but you might have a, a slight leak. But um, if you stand one of these up um, from a foot 
print point of view, they take up about two-thirds of the space. They would, as if they're down like this. I mean, they take up more um, vertical space, but from a horizontal point of view, they take up they take somewhat up somewhat less space. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. If you do come back here, make sure you smile up at the cameras. All right, take care, folks. Thanks for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and uh, enjoy all your days. Bye now.